Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. It's the dead of winter here in Arizona, which means it's perfect weather to test drive a convertible. And today, we've got the Mercedes-Benz E400 Cabriolet, a 4MATIC, and a well-equipped one at that. My first actual test drive, I'd say, in the current E-Class. So we're gonna take it for a drive. I'm gonna really show it to you inside and out. And I'm gonna tell you what I think. The current generation E-Class convertible is very much like the coupe in its silhouette, but as you can see when that top starts coming down, and it is a power soft top on this particular car, when it comes down and stows below a hard tonneau cover, you get that nice convertible look. And it's just very convenient. You can come and go and actually hit that key fob and, and put the top up or down. Once it's down, you can see that this has the nice proportions and the nice sleek look of a top-down convertible. Very elegant, I think. As we look at the styling here, I think this is a much more graceful design from the last generation E-Class. It's not quite as exciting as some of the ones that have come before it, I think, but I do like some of the classic looks, particularly of the 90s and the late 80s, but that's dating me a little bit. But here we've got a car that's starting to get some of the detail and some of the svelte, some of the exciting back. And when you look at the face here, what you see is a grill that's got a lot of nice, rich detail in it. Nice big Mercedes-Benz emblem that cleverly hides the radar sensors that we have for a lot of the autonomous driving features and semi-autonomous driving features that this now does offer. On that hood you can see that we've got the double dome design that really is reminiscent to something from the 50s and we're talking about the Roadsters and some of the classic Mercedes-Benz styling cues right back here in the current car. Headlights on this one, these are the optional LED headlight and as we come around the corner, the wheels on this one, with that AMG package, we get the 19-inch alloy wheel. Very elegant, yet sporting. And this does have the high-performance rubber tires. As we look at the E400 Cabriolet from this angle, this is really where the money's at, I think. This design is really a lot more graceful and a lot sleeker than the last generation. And that's just my design opinion. But from this angle, it just really, really looks better. A couple of things I want to point out. This has the air cap on the top of the windshield that we first saw in the S-Class, and that's a motorized wind deflector that pops up. It's optional. You don't have to have it. And that actually creates a little bit of a buffer over the edge of that windshield header. And so that reduces the buffeting as you're going down the highway. And that goes along with the wind deflector between the rear headrests. That's also motorized. It comes up at the same time as the air cap. And those two serve to really create a buffetless interior. Down the side on the belt line they've got a very pronounced piece of satin trim. It really creates a visual difference from the top and the bottom whether it's up or down and on this particular color it really just sets off quite nicely and that wraps around here into the rear tonneau cover. That rear deck lid has a spoiler molded into it, sort of a, a little bit of a duck tail there. And with these tail lights, LED of course, it just has a nice elongated look that makes the car look more planted, wider. Down in the lower fascia, I'll point out, this has dual exhaust tips down there and they are functional, which is to say air actually goes through those. I only point that out because some of the other brands out there are actually going to fake ornamental exhaust pipes that they're, they're, they're fake. That's all I can say. And so at least Mercedes-Benz, you're paying for the real deal here and you're getting it. So a nice elegant design. I really think this is, I can't say it enough, this is the part of the car that really improves over the last generation. The interior of the E400 Cabriolet is, of course, very much identical to that, what you're going to find in the coupe as well as the sedan, at least as it relates to the dash here. And the first thing I have to point out is that in a Mercedes-Benz, what you're going to expect is top level, top level materials, top level craftsmanship. And that's what we've got here. This is fully loaded with their Premium Package 3. So I've got the beautiful two-tone Napa leather, and that's here in the seats and the two-tone treatment wraps this interior all the way around front to back into the rear seat compartment and also optioned here is the flowing lines wood which goes above and beyond the AMG package that normally has a bit more of a sporting appearance in here this is more of a an old school luxury look I think you've got leather and wood and the one thing I really like in this particular wood is that flowing lines those pinstripes in the wood because 
it really accentuates the curvature and the design of this interior. It really highlights that and it looks very classy. It's very in today. Now, the one thing I don't necessarily care for is the design of the dash itself when it gets to the instrument panel. It's got a big, wide, rectangular fixed panel, and that's because we've got the dual 12.3 inch displays that are optional in this. And the problem I'm having with it from a design perspective is the fact that this is designed that's built around a piece of hardware, not the hardware designed to fit the design and so what we've got here is to me what looks like a 70s American car with a big flat square dash that was just sort of made to fit this big piece of hardware now outside of that this dash lights up with a lot of flair it's customizable to the nth degree both the instrument cluster ahead of you as well as the 12.3 inch display for the infotainment system are infinitely customizable not only in the content that's there but there are three different themes that you can actually go through and choose the overall look and feel of it so that's very nice if you're going to get this car I highly recommend spend the extra money and get this because otherwise you've got a standard instrument cluster in front of you and then you've got this big square display over here and I just think this looks more cohesive in that way the one thing I would point out, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in the infotainment section, is that you do get a lot of glare, especially in the convertible with the sun coming in. Uh, it's very shiny material, so that is sort of a ergonomic issue. But outside of that, wonderful interior. These seats are very comfortable. These are actually the massage seats, so they're heated, they're ventilated, the armrests are heated, steering wheels heated. But these seats, they've got the massage feature and you can get on the screen here and set any number of different ways for a massage for both the passenger and the driver. It's bliss. If you're sitting somewhere and you're waiting for someone and it's, uh, you could just sit here and really have a nice time. I, I can't quite get into it when I'm driving because I find it's a little bit distracting, but if you're on a long road trip, it might just be the ticket. It's just a nice, comfortable cabin. There's plenty of space here. And when we move to the rear seat, this is a four passenger vehicle, but there's room for real human beings back there. These seats, as I've got them, about halfway forward, halfway back for my height, about 5'9", and there's plenty of room back there for full-size adults to be comfortable. When it comes to storage, we are in a convertible, so you're not going to expect SUV levels of storage. In this clamshell door, you've got a large space down here, not caring for the clamshells too much because it's just not quite as easy to use as a regular opening lid. but. It's what you find in a luxury car like this. The center console here does have cup holders built into a space down here, and there's also a wireless charger down there, a large space for your phone, and of course, the USB plug to plug it in and charge and connect it up with the infotainment system. The only problem with it is if you're using it for a cup holder, you can't get your phone in and out of it at the same time. That is one little bit of a design defect, but a very small thing at that. At nighttime, this dash lights up with brilliant LED backlighting right here under this panel here and into the door panels. You have a nice blue hue and that of course is customizable to some extent. Beautiful, nice mood lighting at night. It's, it's really quite special. When it comes to scoring this interior, I gotta tell you Mercedes-Benz has lived up to their image. Excellent materials, beautiful details, and the overall look of it is very elegant and befitting of its price. Yes, there was the design issue I have personally with this dash, but that is purely my opinion, not really the merits of the quality and overall execution of this interior. Very well done. Everything you'd expect for this price tag, five out of five stars. When it comes to the infotainment system, what we've got here is a full featured 12.3 inch screen and it's controlled entirely down here by the center console puck and you've got a touchpad here with sort of a mouse button. You've got buttons and you've got roller knobs on each side and even though I typically have a problem with some of these systems and other brands, Mercedes-Benz has managed to make it work that once you get past the learning curve, which well honestly is a little bit steep, but once you get used to it and you get it set to where you want it, it's very intuitive. The touch control here works very good. It's very sensitive to your touch. The knob here, it does what you'd expect it to. And you've got the volume knob here. It all works very well. I'm pretty impressed and I expected to hate it, I'll be honest with you. And so the one thing that I would point out is that there is a bit of glare here on the screen in the sunlight. Aside from the glare, the graphics are very good, the maps are very intuitive, and that's good because navigating with this would otherwise be a nightmare, as it is in some of the other cars out there that I test. 
it's all about the menus and the intuitiveness. And so I like it. I really do like it. It's fully featured. You've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You'd expect that here, wouldn't you? Lastly, the Burmester audio system sounds phenomenal. You can see that here in these beautifully crafted aluminum speaker grills. That's just the beginning of it. Going down the road with the top down, it just has a beautiful sound, even with the top up. Overall, I'm very impressed with this system, and I have to be honest with you, I didn't think I was going to be because this interface here just looks like it's not going to be fun, but intuitiveness, simplicity, customizable, great audio, five out of five stars. In the E400 Cabriolet, we've got one engine available, and that is the three liter twin turbocharged V6. In this car, it comes with a nine speed automatic transmission, and here we've got option, the Formatic all wheel drive system. As such, it has 329 horsepower and 354 pound-feet of torque. With that, it's rated by the EPA at 20 MPG City, 25 MPG Highway, and 22 MPG combined. Now, if you watch my videos, you know that the first question I always ask is, how does it go? Woo! Got a nice bit of punch there. Hmm, and speeding. And of course the top is down, why not? It's a convertible, so I apologize for the wind noise in advance. This is a luxury car, so this engine is very sedate in its personality. It really seeks to be refined, and with the twin turbocharged V6, we've got power. And so it's a really nice combination of power, not too much noise, but just a little bit of a sporty sound to give you that extra bit of enjoyment when you ask for it. And this has multiple drive modes. Now, before I get there, this has an auto start stop system to save fuel, so it stops the engine, starts it right back up when you go to take off from a stop, and I actually find that it works pretty good. Not as lacking in refinement as some of the other cars out there, so just wanted to get that out of the way. I'm not complaining about it, and I usually do in a lot of cars, but back to the engine and the drive modes. We've got the drive mode selector down here. This has Eco for saving gas, Comfort, which is the default, Sport and then Sport Plus. That changes the way the engine behaves when you ask for power when you're driving around. It changes the way the transmission behaves, the 9-speed transmission. And of course, it changes the way it responds to these paddle shifters here on the steering wheel. So when I put this up in Sport Plus, the first thing that happens is this jumps up in RPM because it drops it down in gear and it responds immediately to these paddle shifters. Almost immediately. There's still paddle shifters with an automatic, so it gives you a much more sporty feel. Now, the one thing I have noticed with this transmission is when you dial it up to Sport Plus, it gets pretty rough and it shifts, and you want a tighter shift, that's why you ask for Sport, but uh, this transmission actually gets a little bit jerky and it shifts, and it lacks the refinement that you expect at this price, uh, just in and out of gears and when you're driving around town. Fuel economy, I got 21 MPG this week, which is just less than the 22 that it promises, but I spent the majority of my time in the city with just a little bit of out here in the suburbs and on the highway. So if I had done the 50-50 mix like the EPA expects, we'd probably be right there at 22. So overall, this is a powertrain that I am for the most part impressed with. You're not gonna be disappointed if you just drive this around in comfort most of the time. If you start asking for performance, Really, if that's what you're after, I'd suggest going into the AMG because that's really going to be more what you're looking for there. All in, this powertrain gets four out of five stars. Now, on the ride and handling bit, this car has a fully independent multi-link front and rear suspension, air suspension. This has the optional air body control suspension, which, as we talked about with these drive modes, adjusts its stiffness level from comfort where I'm at now has sort of a floaty Mercedes-Benz traditional ride and when you dial it up to Sport stiffens it just a little bit and Sport Plus you really do feel it firm up but even on the top modes it still has a little bit of that soft ride and a little bit of that boatiness that Mercedes-Benz well for the most part has always had again if you want the Sport stiff driving you want to go into the AMG so for a cruiser, this is perfectly dialed for that. And so looking at it through cruiser eyes, this is a suspension that's refined in that way, going over bumps around my neighborhood here, imperfect pavement. It's a quiet ride, it's a solid ride. It's a chassis and a driving experience that feels its price. 
you're not going to be disappointed here. So the chassis gets five out of five stars. When it comes to quality, fit, and finish, it's something I take very seriously, especially with a luxury car like this, because you're spending up to get more, right? So Mercedes-Benz, this is really where you're going to expect it to be the best of the best. And when I look over the paint finish, the body panel fit and alignment, the interior materials, how it feels going down the road, this car met my expectations on every measure. And really, that doesn't happen with all luxury cars. So uh, if you have high expectations here, you're not going to be disappointed. Quality comes in at five out of five stars. All right, my friends, wrapping it up for the E-Class Cabriolet. I have to say, this is probably the sexiest E-Class since the early 90s, and that's just my era. That's when I really came into appreciating cars, and I really loved that era of Mercedes-Benz design. It was timeless, and this is a car, I think, much better looking than the last generation E-Class, and it just has a nice, sexy presentation, especially in that rear view. Now, to the specs here, we're just under $90,000 on this one, near fully loaded, except for going up into the AMG. Uh, this is about as much as you can spend here, and it's always hard to put a value on a car like this because it's a luxury item, you don't need it. Uh, but when you consider everything we've got here over the base price of about 68 for the 4Matic, uh, I put value at four out of five stars. When you put that in with everything we've already talked about, we're at four and a half stars out for the review. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed the test drive. I really enjoyed this car. It came away a lot more impressed than I expected to be, if I'm honest. That said, see our latest video right there on the big square or subscribe to our YouTube channel right there on the big round logo. Either way, I'll always tell you what I think.